Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored because I don't think that ever before in my life have I had a chance to speak in front of a such distinguished audience for something that I so wholeheartedly believe in. The question today is, should the consumption and possession of drugs be legalized? And the answer is clearly a resounding yes. I'm going to do five things in my speech. First of all, I'm going to outline the model for legalization of all drugs. Where would we legalize drugs and which drugs would be legalized? Secondly, I'm going to talk about the morality associated with drug use and legalization. Secondly, thirdly, I'm going to talk about the public health aspects of legalization. Fourthly, we'll take a look at the economics of legalization. And fifthly, the role of criminal, the criminal justice system in dealing with drugs. Let's, let's move on to the first point, which is to outline the model. So what exactly would we do? We would legalize all drugs uh, pretty much for which there is substantial demand, right? And we would also have the state sell and produce those drugs. We could consider commercialization in the case of softer drugs, but we believe that in the case of harder drugs, it's better for the state to retain the monopoly on sales and production for safety reasons on which I will elaborate later on, right? So, where would we legalize those drugs? We believe that legalization in the long run would be the preferable drug policy for the vast majority of societies in the world, right? But that does not necessarily mean that we should legalize all drugs everywhere right now, because we believe that the successful implementation of this policy um, is contingent upon the society's ability to implement the sort of harm reduction measures that I'm going to be talking about later on in my speech. So I would say that uh, the currently Western liberal democracies would be suitable societies for the adoption of this policy. I hope that, is, that it is okay. Um, also, we say that regulatory regimes for the different drugs that we're going to legalize would be decided on a drug-to-drug -drug basis, right? There would be no blanket response. Like some of the re regulatory options we have available, for example, is that we wouldn't sell drugs to minors. In the case of harder drugs, we would require the users to obtain a permit or a license, or we could limit the places where the people are able to use those drugs. For example, in the case of harder drugs, when there are more health risks, usage would be limited to supervised consumption rooms. There are various more regulatory options available. The general point is that different drugs require different, different responses, and this is infinitely preferable to the current rigid prohibitionist framework where we basically put a slap, like a slap on response for all drugs, right? Um, and we would also prescribe drugs to addicts who can't afford them. This is quite important as well to reduce crime. So, let's move on to my first substantial point, the morality of drug use. We believe that the general principle, um, the general moral principle for public policy should be to maximize welfare and minimize harm, right? Because we don't think that we're currently banning drugs just for the sake of banning them. We are banning them because they cause some sort of harm, right? We say that in general, the third party harms that emanate out of drug use are not a product of those drugs themselves, but a product of the social conditions in which those drugs are used, right? We say that in, ge in general, um, the health risks, for example, um, that, that are like, you know, let's say like the crime that is associated with drug use comes from the fact that people don't have access to drugs, right? Like when they can't afford them, they are not prescribed drugs, and in those circumstances, they would have to go raise money by committing crimes when they are poor, right? So you don't really have leave those people a choice. But in general, in terms of uh, harm to self, we believe that people should have the freedom of choice to define who they are, and we believe that it's vastly practical to, be, to being subjugated by the state in, private, in matters of private morality such as this. Because we believe that it is a fundamental prerequisite to lead um, a dignified life to be able to define the constitutive attachments who form who you are, right? Who define your culture and your identity. And for better or for worse, drug use for a lot of people is a big part of that. In case you're saying, um, that, we, 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 this, that this plan would actually encourage use, then that is not true, because we would also implement an educated program that would actively discourage use. What is, who are encouraging use are the dealers who are currently selling drugs under the status quo. Let's move on to the next point and talk about public health. Three sub points here. First of all, safety. Drug use on, in a legal regulated market would be much safer because we would have uh, control over the purity and the strength of the substances. Also, we could determine who is able to act 
access those substances, like we shouldn't sell to minors and or people who are already high, for example, because there are increased health risks. Also, we would be able to provide the sort of drug-related education that we are currently enabled to provide, right? Like health warnings on the packaging and guidelines for use inside the packaging. Also, we would have more funding for harm reduction measures in general because we could take the drug revenue that we get from the sales of those drugs in a regulated market and invest it in harm reduction. So massive public health gains. Let's talk about the economics of drug use. We say that, first of all, legalization would take the unfair burden off transit and producer countries that is currently being uh, carried by them for the consumption that takes place in the West. Right? Because all countries would be able to produce their own drugs, and they would. Secondly, we would take massive economic, a massive economic burden off the prison system because we wouldn't have to incarcerate people for nonviolent drug offences, which I believe is completely absurd. Right? We also say, and this is very important, that we would undercut criminal cartels and eliminate important revenue streams that are currently being used to fund organised crime. And this is very, very important. So, finally, let's move on to the point of criminal justice. Like, the reason why we think that we can use criminal justice system um, to prevent people from using drugs um, is the assumption that deterrence actually works. This sort of assumption hinges upon the logic that people who use drugs undertake before drug use a rational calculus where they weigh the harms and benefits of drug use, right? This simply doesn't happen. Drug use is not necessarily rational and deterrence has, there, there's been no evidence whatsoever that deterrence has ever worked, right? We believe that fundamentally, like in, in, when, when criminal justice should be used, is, um, is, is to basically eliminate third party harm, right? But this isn't the case in this case. And we don't think that the state has a prerogative to legitimately intervene in the realm of private morality and subjugate citizens and deprive them of their autonomous agency. So, in summary, what we have said today is basically that the reason why drugs are harmful is not, that, is not because of the drugs themselves, but because of the social circumstances that the drugs are being, are being used in. If we would legalize drugs, we would eliminate those circumstances. Thank you.